Oprah. I'll, I'll get you. Uh, we'll, we, we will be, I will be your agent. Just, just at, bring me the documentation. We will get rich. Because women know how to go to the brink of the death in the natural. God uses in every gifting, say word of knowledge, word of wisdom, gift of faith, discerning of spirits, uh, tongues, interpretation of tongue, prophecies, healings, miracles. In all of the giftings that are supernatural, God uses your human personality and your human giftings to match his calling in your life. Does that make sense? So if that's true then, then women are more susceptible to know how to travail and intercede. That's why there seems to be more female intercessors than male intercessors. I don't believe it has anything to do with the call of God being less on men, but I believe that it is easy for women to get emotional. And it is easier in some cultures. Now, my family, it's completely different. I'm the emotional one. Ah! My wife's the one over here saying, give me facts, give me facts, give me facts. I'll call her, Davy. Oh, this is what's happening. She says, "Calm down. What's happening? Okay, give me facts." What? Da, 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 you know, and we're kind of confused. She says that God gave me that so I can minister at women's conferences because I, I think with the left side of my brain, she thinks with the right side of her brain, and and women are predominantly intercessors because of their ability to feel pain and feel emotion. Because many of us have to understand. Do you agree in Singapore that females are the more emotional of the species? Females like verbal communication. They like to talk. They like to cry. They like to hear about your day. And men want to read the paper, drink a hot coffee, and watch sports. And the woman, she's been at home all day cooking, cleaning. You've been in traffic 12 hours. You come home and you're walking in and you go, hmm. And she's like, hi, how's your day? Guess what I did? Look what the kids did. Here's their grades. Here's their homework. What do you want for supper? Where are we going to go tonight? You want to go with me out? You want to go to a restaurant? You want this? How do you feel? I feel good. I feel sad. I did this. You want to see my mother? My mother's coming to visit. You want this? When are we going on vacation? Can I buy this? You like this new dress? You want to see my new dress? You want to come here? And the men are sitting there that's why men are from Mars women are from Venus and women are the more emotional but you put it in church when you look at praise and worship when you look at intercession when you look at worship who are the most predominant worshipers and the most predominant prayer warriors and the people that God uses more emotional in even the church culture are women because it is their natural proclivity to be emotional so it does not mean that they are more spiritual than men it means that God normally uses men to do the work of the ministry and he uses women in their emotions to birth it so the women become the mothers and the nurturers and the men become the husbandmen or the laborers that's the divine plan you're not hearing me you're not getting it the women become the nurturers and the mother does that mean men are not intercessors no I didn't tell you that I'm an intercessor but I'm talking about predominantly probably about 75 to 80 percent women are the mothers and the nurturers and then the men are saying okay how are we going to get a building how are we going to pay for it we got to have new Sunday school rooms we're having problems with parking we got to do this we got to raise funds to send our mission trip over here and they're thinking about how we going to do it and the women over there go oh Jesus 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 and it works together if you don't fight one another But when a woman demands a man to change and the man demands the woman to change, you end up with divorce. Because we can only change everything. You cannot change your nature. A leopard cannot change his spots. We say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. The hardest thing that God ever taught me is you can't cast out flesh. Are you learning anything? I feel like I'm teaching because of the times. I'm trying to just give you everything I got. You cannot cast out flesh. You can beat out flesh, but you can't cast it out. You cannot change your true nature, who you really are. God made you. I go back to my sermon last night. You are the miracle. God made you a peculiar way. And if you're not being fulfilled the way you are, you need to find the plan of God for your life because you may be trying to force something to happen that was never the plan of God in your life in the first place. That's why it's important to marry the right person and to not be unequally yoked together. 
And I just want to go on record that I agree with teaching the young people that they don't need to casual date. Because when you're kissing on just anybody, you're sharing spirits. And you're meshing spirits and you're doing a Hollywood carnal culture and you're bringing it in the church. Oh, it just died on me in here now. And what happens is it is imperative that you marry the right person because I don't want people to raise hand. But there are people here that their marriage happened before God. And now what God has joined together that no man put asunder. So now they're trying to make do with the situation that it may not have been. They may not have married somebody that was completely the will of God for them. But now that they've come in the kingdom, the Lord can take a bad situation and turn it around. And what the devil meant for evil, God can turn it around for good. And I believe that. But I'm telling you, you'd be so much further alone if you would let God give you somebody that matches your gifting, your personality, your calling, and your passion. If I had married anybody else, I don't even think I'd be saved. Can you imagine 18 years? This woman has went with me to Africa, to India, to the Caribbean, to all over. She's washed clothes in a muddy bucket of water with a washboard in Guyana. We've lived and we went, when we went to India to start that church, we took 600 U.S. a month and rented a home in a Hindu, a room in a Hindu family's home. We didn't have a house. We rented a room with a bathroom and lived with a Hindu Indian family for six months. No air conditioning, no fan, no hot water. My wife's beautiful and intelligent. I put her through some stuff. But I married her so young and it was the will of God. She didn't even know she was suffering. (laughs) She thought everybody did that. People ask her, they're like, oh, Sister Sue, we feel so sorry for you and your husband's always gone. She's like, I thought everybody did this. It's just because she fits me. What if I'd have married somebody that sits home crying every time I leave and you can't leave me, I'm lonely and I need you and you're my husband. Oh, get over it, dear Lord. So you better be careful. I'm helping you, Brother White Young. You better be careful who who you team up with in, in the spirit. So women predominantly are our intercessors. So when I begin to deal in a few moments with mood swings and emotions, I told you all that in a positive way so the ladies, the sisters, don't get mad at me. Because I'm an intercessor. So I wanted to tell you that up front. Because some of the things I will teach in a few minutes may seem personal. Because I will be dealing a lot with the female personality. Because the enemy can take what God has meant for good. And can turn it around and use it against us. That's why we're not ignorant concerning the devices. Now there are four different types of intercessors. There are general intercessors. General intercessors. This is what I said earlier. The general intercession, people that intercede, like coming and putting your hands on the maps and the nations, and ever so often you pray for the world, pray for the nations, pray for your neighborhood, do prayer walking, do prayer mapping. That's general intercessions. That's really not a travail. That's not an instant thing that just hits you and that you birth, but it's a general type. It is effective. It is intercession, but it's more in a general format, number one. Number two, crisis intercession. Crisis intercessors can't pray a list if you paid them. They can't pray the Bible if you paid them. And that's one thing I'm always telling intercessors. Read the word, read the word, read the word. Because crisis intercessors, they pray basically out of emotion and out of needs. They just wait until it hits them and then Katie bar the door, here you go. Just ah! Crisis intercessors, they wait on the burden to hit them. The negative of a crisis intercessor is when they don't have that heavy crisis on them, they're they have a difficulty being consistent with normal study and normal praying. Oh, I just hit somebody. I think I'm helping somebody right now. A crisis intercessor, it, because it's so powerful and it's so, you get yoked and it's God praying through you. And there's this power and anointing that when that lifts, it's kind of boarding, just sitting around and opening the word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shout, I want, da, 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 da. And then you're praying the list. I named this person. I named this person. To some people, that's as deep as they ever get. But if you've ever been an intercessor, a crisis intercessor, like my mother, and she prayed and an angel touches her son halfway across the world, you know, that's pretty powerful. But the problem with that is how there, when, when that is not there, you still got to pray. When that anointing to pray and that travail to pray and that emotion to pray is not there, you're still called to pray. I would that men would pray everywhere. 
that all men would pray every way. Pray with